and we will be having presenters, uh, Brad Olson and Ben Wears, and you know, lots of things that we can cover. If you have any questions, make sure that you send your questions through the Zoom and they will be brought up. We appreciate that. And we're going to have a prayer from Renee Fazbeck at the end. Thank you. Our dear father for attending. Anyone that still wants to say anything, write your questions down, like I said, and we'll go through that. Yeah, at the end, we'll have a question and answer. Okay, so at the end, question. Can I hang on to them till the end? Thank you so much. You're welcome to also type them in the shop as you think of them. She's going first. Apparently, I'm going first. All right. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully, you're not sick of hearing from me because I do this every time. But, um, I'm going to go through the fuel first because we have other people presenting a little bit on light and heat. So I will. Uh, back so so what kind of fuels should we store for heating and cooking why propane propane okay propane is a great one to store for like the propane heaters what else butane 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 stoves or you can get butane heaters also okay what else sterno sterno cans External cans. Okay, that's a great one for heat and for uh, cooking. What about gasoline? Who stores gasoline? That's restricted where I live. Yeah, that's so I was going to say that to start out with, you know. There's a lot of I can get it. What should I say? Unless you know how to do it. Um, so there's not one. Uh, there's not one single plan that fits everyone's household, right? You know, like you can't store gas where you're at. That's probably a lot of people. I'm just in a residential area and I can store, you know, a few cans of gas, no problem. So you have to kind of adapt this to your own situation. That's where everything emergency preparedness is. So, so I store gas for a couple different reasons. You can go through all those fuels, but for, you know, for my car, if I need to dump it in my car in an emergency, if I, gas stations are down, I store it for, you know, if I need gas for my chainsaw, if I have to cut some branches down or whatever, an emergency, or anything, maybe my generator runs off gas, so for different things, you know, like we said, propane's great for the propane heaters, you can get propane stoves, you can get propane lights, um, also, uh, really lost my train of thought, like we mentioned the butane, the butane stoves, the butane heaters, so, Tell us about different fuels, Richard. Uh, we went to a preparedness meeting once, and we were standing out behind Bonnie, uh, Bonnie's house, and Bonnie Johnson. And uh, the fellow made a comment to me, and, and I said, "You're not looking very far." And I see your two bricks, but I've made a rocket stove out of 24 bricks. And she had a whole wood fence and a dead tree. And the rocket stove uses very little fuel for the amount of heat that it goes. And in that, I said, I said, you're standing on your stove. And I says, this whole yard is your fuel. So sometimes, even though we look at buying uh, containers for fuel, it's good to know that we can go back to a natural source. Right. Also, with the green po uh, pro uh, LP gas tank, uh, at, uh, you can get an adapter. So if you have a big canister and it doesn't, it doesn't uh, accommodate this right here, I have a, uh, another stove like this, and you, you screw this onto the back. We use it in a cabin that I take care of. But you say, oh, that's pretty expensive. And, and uh, Harbor Freight has an adapter that you can take and refill these. So this is a good source, especially if you've got your barbecue stove and yeah. you want to take and, and increase. Yeah, absolutely. So your yeah. fuel source. So I was going to yeah, mention, like, go to the basics. I mean, start a fire, you know, 
put a pot over the fire, throw your steaks on a rock. You know? <laughs> the worst case scenario, yeah, burn your kitchen table. <laughs> so go old school. So there's tons of different fuels. Um, for cooking, I just brought a few things. You know, this is a propane oven with a stove on top. Camp Chef makes that. Um, you know, kind of more on the expensive side, but on the, on the you know, cheapo side, I've got two bricks here and a sterno can. For those of you who don't know, these Sam's Club and Costco, and you can even find these at the dollar store, these canned heats, you know, and they'll burn anywhere from two to four, six hours, depending on which ones you buy. Yeah, let's put that on a, in between the bricks and throw a pot or a fry pan on top of that. You've got a way to boil your water, you know. As was mentioned, we have the, the butane stoves. These just take the little uh, butane cans. These are awesome. I, I use these in a power outage a couple times. Um, that's just a, a burner stove, you know, pretty simple. So you're kind of limited on what you can cook on a stove. You know, I've got a little foldable stove here. You can either put fuel, you need all sorts of different fuel tablets, or you can put wood in that, or it can pretty much accommodate any fuel. Um, really cheap option too for the sterno cans. These little stoves, they're like, what are these things, Richard? Get them at Sportsman's Warehouse, but I think they're under five bucks. They fold flat and just put the sterno can in here. So, hold them up, put your pot on top of that. So, that's an option. What did I do out for here? These are kind of cool. We've got these little, they've yet to try these. They're called Quick Stove. It's a little, I think it's compressed wood pellet, is what it is. I got a little stove and drop it in there. But you could also take that Quick Stove and throw it in between two bricks. But that's just a little stove that goes in and there's tons and tons of options. I wanted people to think, what do you already have at home that you can cook on an emergency? Where did you pick that up? The quick stove? Yeah, a little bit small quick stove. Oh, it's totally right. built. It's, it's, I think I got, where did we buy that? On Amazon? I got it online, but it was recommended by somebody. Yeah, sure. I, I can't remember if we got it off Amazon or if it's online, so. <laughs> Yeah. Something else to think about too is something we have in our house is a solar oven. Yeah, sorry, I was going to mention that too. The solar ovens, I don't have one, therefore I don't have one to display, but you can actually make solar ovens out of a cardboard box and tin foil. Look it up online, but you can also buy solar ovens. So, um, one brand. We have a fire pit in our backyard, mm -hmm. so if we want to, we can plan it that we can yep. so there, wood. There's one thing, yeah, you got a fire pit. I was going to mention we've got a little propane fire pit at home. I could use that to cook on. Great for marshmallows too. <laughs> but so yeah, a, a wood firewood bit in your backyard. You burn. What else do you have at home? That most people have at home that they can cook on. You may not think. What about your barbecue? You cook most anything on a barbecue, right? What else? Like we mentioned, just burning wood. You know, open campfire. You know, wood or propane stove. What about a camping or backpacking stove? A lot of people have those just sitting at home. We mentioned the sterno cans. So there's tons of different things you know you can cook on an emergency. You don't have to go out and buy a $200 oven. You know these are awesome, but you know you don't have to do that. If you're on a budget, just you know a simple sterno can and a couple of bricks you can cook off from that. So <laughs> um, that's just all I had for you know. <laughs> Kind of heating and throw well, off for cooking really quick. Do you want to go or do you want to go? That, that can go. But I, I, have, I throw out a caution with some of these items, you don't want to use them in the house. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. I forgot to mention that. Just because it runs off propane, I'm going to throw that out. Hope I don't take your thunder. With like the buddy heaters, and just because it's propane does not mean it's safe for use indoors. Like this stove, not safe for use indoors. You know, the butane stoves, some of them say they're used for uses indoors and some of them are not used indoors. So you gotta watch that. A lot of things are not safe for use indoors. That's the Sterno cans are, you know, some of these other stuff, like obviously this, this heat puck, you wouldn't want to use that indoors because it's compressed wood, you like this part and wood. So you kind of gotta watch safe. You know, you hear about that in power outages in big cities, people firing up their Charcoal barbecue inside. There's another thing. I forgot to mention charcoal. Mm -hmm. Great, great for 
cooking on, but you, know, you hear about people firing up a charcoal barbecue or even a propane barbecue inside their house. Not a good idea. Good way to get carbon monoxide poisoning. So, what are your suggestions if people have a regular wood burning fireplace in their house? As far as safety and what they can cook and no, cooking in here, it's just like having a fire. Yeah, you know, so yeah, definitely. There's not. Uh, I don't personally have one. I wish I did. You know, or if you have a uh, you know wood burning stove in your house, that's great for heat and to cook on. So, Brad. Yes, Curtis. Uh, years ago, when I was preparing for, I got sick and tired of using the uh, the electric phosphoria, and I also went to uh, uh, fuel oil. But I had an opportunity to buy a wood burning stove or a coal burning stove. And I boosted it off of the floor. And so I can actually cook off that wood grain stove. So I have an opportunity there. And I've also got a, uh, a, a, a grill. I got two ways to cook. Yeah. So like I can say, yeah, wood burning stove is great, uh, great thing to have if you have one. They're expensive. But if you have one, that's awesome. So have a barbecue. So that's just really quick synopsis, just to maybe give you ideas of things, you know, complicated things, the simple things you can cook on an emergency. Okay, Matt, you're up for heating. Okay, so I'm gonna discuss how to stay warm when there's, when your furnace isn't working or when there's, yeah, when there's some big trouble, big storm, big uh, problems, some alternative ways to stay warm. Um, and obviously these things, if you're using those, you're, you know, it's a good way to stay warm as well. But some of these are, are a little more out, out of the box thinking that can, can help us stay warm as well. You mentioned already these nice portable propane. Uh, this is ours here, the, the Big Buddy. Um, it runs on just a, one of these on the side. Two of them will get you to about, what, six, no. One will run from about two to six hours, depending on if you're full blast or if you're on a low setting. Um, and then you can also hook up your 20 pound propane tank to it on both sides. And that can get you, if you're running a load, it can go for over 200 hours. And so these are really useful if you need them. So, um, okay. I need to add, so they are okay to run indoors, but you do need to keep a window somewhat open. Because when the fire department came by last summer to prepare this fair, they said that they wished everyone owned one. So they because some of our sources are not super safe but the fire department said they wish everyone owned a big buddy because they are a lot safer than what a lot of people do put indoors because if you are going to be inside and there's a blizzard they said big buddy is what they wished everyone owned so if you're going to run propane you do need to crack windows yeah so keep in mind i was going to mention this sorry to butt in better good but any flame whether it be a heater or a stove or whatever, anything that's burning is burning oxygen. Right, you need to crack windows. It's, yeah, you need to, some ventilation. I mean, if you're right. just gonna run it for a few minutes, right. you'll be fine. But if you're on it for hours and hours, yeah. it's, it's burning the oxygen. For it. Also, I was gonna mention the propane bottles, whether it's the big one or the little one, not a good idea to store these in your house. I mean, if you ever had a fire, these would go up like a bomb. Not a good, any sort of fuel for any of these, your external cans, whatever, don't, please don't get, you know, storm in your house, stick them out in the shed or, find someplace else to put them, but not a good idea to storm in your house as soon as an accelerant and a fire. So, sorry, I couldn't know. We can talk about the fan adapter. Can buy. I'll be with the fan adapter. So <coughs> that, the heat comes out of that, but if you, that that is an older model, and there's a fan adapter, an adapter that you can buy that plugs into the wall that, that blows the heat out into the room. But like Brad was saying, the newer models, you the don't have a fan, don't with fan anymore. They just automatically blow. Yeah. So some of these older models like this one that we have, you have to buy an adapter that would turn on the fan. Otherwise it just emits the heat. But Which works anyway. pretty good still. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, and and yeah. A small room. We haven't ever had to use it. Brad's used his plenty. <laughs> the year for ice fishing. So from the high tech to the, to the low tech, um, we collect our, our dryer lint and just keep them in a plastic bag. These are great for starting fires. We'll throw them in our in our um, in our fire pit in our backyard and it helps get things going. Um, those are always just good to have on hand. Um, this is this is an interesting one. You get just your your classic food storage 
can, number 10 can, and then you just a toilet paper roll without the uh, without the um, cardboard core inside. Take that out, douse it with some, just some of your, your rubbing alcohol, and then light it and it'll do a nice little flame. Obviously it'll get, you know, be careful. But they, with all this, be careful, of course, but when you're in a pinch and you need something to heat you, toilet paper comes kind of premium now, so, you, you know. It's really, do you want to stay warm or have a toilet paper roll? But so that's a good source there as well with some alcohol. This is a, a pretty ingenious thing here. You get a you get a, a bread pan with a couple small candles, the tea light candles, and a couple terracotta pots, a couple ceramic pots. Small, you know, they can't be the same size. I guess you could if you wanted to do it like that. But a uh, small one, if it's got a hole, you need to plug it with some tin foil so it keeps the and you put that over your, your lit candles and then put a bigger one with a hole over the top and it, it, it'll take that heat, build it up, and then it'll radiate out into this and then radiate out, radiate out, radiate out into your small room and it'll keep it uh, pretty warm. It, it, uh, that uh, airflow there is, is pretty nice to, uh, to, to warm our, a small room. Like she says, make sure you, you know, uh, get some ventilation there after a while. These will get hot, so don't just grab it right afterwards because you'll have to burn your hand a little bit. So um, those are a couple of good alternative ones. And then of course the more standard uh, big buddies that are nice. And then of course the fire start logs are always a nice thing to have on hand in case you need it. So those are a couple of things that we have in our house. Thermal that, sleeping bags that we have. Bring. Yeah, then the clothing, of course, thermal sleeping bags, you can get those cheap. Some of them are so small and you hold it in your hand, you know, I don't know how warm they are, but. They seem to, you know, they're warm. Ten bucks, you know, on Amazon, you can, you know, take care of you. You won't die from hypothermia. And Patriot has a real good uh, bag, yes. and it's it's heavy enough that it's you're not going to tear it. Yeah, some of those get pretty. Yes. Ones, yeah. So uh, you know, of course, you know, wool caps and, and clothes next to your skin that, that you know will wick away the sweat so it doesn't cling to your body with. It's wet and cold at the end. Um, you know, mittens are great. Wool mittens. Layers are obviously, you know, this is you know, probably pretty obvious, but layers are always essential. It seems every time you read about someone getting stuck in a storm, they're, they're in shorts and a t-shirt. You know, so being prepared is obviously a key in that. So um, anything else? You can also make like a micro environment in your house, like set a tent up in your living room or Built yeah. like a blanket yeah. fort, like you used to when you were a kid. Yeah. Just yeah. Drop and block off yeah. doorways, block yeah. off doorways, and stay in the Doorways and windows yeah. and blankets and plastic. Yeah. Stay in the room. That's a great point too. Yeah, drop that heat because yeah, if it's a matter of survival, yeah, live in a tent for a couple of days just fine. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks, Richard. Richard, I mean. Well, uh, a couple of years ago. I went through my go bag and we went through our 72 hour kits and we made a decision. Number one is, is that batteries are only going to last so long. And uh, next thing you know, you take the back off and the acid and the batteries come out and destroy your flashlight. So uh, we've gotten, my wife and I have gotten into uh, Patriots. And one of the items that uh, I should have brought, because she talked to me about it, and I said, no, that's not me, that's not me, was actually a thermos looking item. It looks just about like this right here. And it stands about this much taller, and you open it up, and it has parabolic mirrors that heat up a cylinder. So if you've got uh, freeze dried food, and you want warm soup and that, it, it takes and brings within about 15 to 20 minutes the water almost to a uh, full rolling boil. Yeah, I love it. And it also is a, a good way in terms of cooking meals. Uh, so what we did is with, pa with Patriot and Goal Zero, we've got items that we can plug into our solar panels. And it was interesting because Bonnie brought that up and I just, I kind of keyed off of it. And that was, was that she was charging her cell phones with 
they call them a, a generator, but what they are is a solar battery collector. And this is a gold zero light. And if I were to turn it on, I like to harass my neighbors because this thing will shoot from Vineway Circle clear over to Rodeo Lane and have a beam that's only about this big. And so it's really powerful. It charges off of a USB, which goes into your solar panels. And uh, in that, this is bare bones. And this is a real nice little item because it also goes off of USB to charge it. So you can charge it off of your solar panels. And again, you don't have uh, an acid type battery that you're gonna have problems with. Uh, the type of battery that's in here, I couldn't tell you right off, but uh, we take care of a cabin. This is our night light in the cabin and it goes on. Uh, one of the little lights that I carry around in my truck and in my go bag is a Lucy light. And those Lucy lights, yeah, they'll, they'll stay on for oh, almost, the right here. yeah, right here, almost 12 hours and, and they're like 14 bucks. There's your solar. That, that is absolutely super. So with what we've got, we've actually got little solar packets that we charge our lights with. And with the packet, they have all the different cords that you would need. And the lights that we got in the Gold Zero are, this one's still connected to the battery. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we charge these up about every six months so that we've got a battery supply. And this, this particular light connects up to a series of lights, like if you were in a tent or at home, you need more illumination. There are a series of lights that you can take and there's little hooks and the oops, they can all be uh, adapted to uh, the different batteries. There's the big one. Oh, the big battery didn't get here. But we've taken small battery packs to uh, do our lights with. The flashlights that we buy or bought uh, are uh, regenerable with little solar panels on the flashlight themselves. And this comes from uh, Patriots. And right here, they have little solar panels that we'll take and, and regenerate the uh, light. So this is actually a little survival with the window breaker and a, a seat belt cutter and a compass on the bottom, which is really nice. Yes. So what do you do, put it in the window or uh, to get the sunlight to, uh, to charge? This is, a, this is a light that I use all the time because I've got some chickens out and back and I harass my dog and we take off. And I just set it out on the barbecue during the day. And I can, I can get probably close to five hours off of this. And if I just set it out in the barbecue for a day and just get it to where the, the sun will come across it, uh, it'll generate it right back up to, if not full, up to the three bars. I think this is the one I've been using. And right now in the back, it's on three bars. This is a gold zero item. And it also is, is uh, capable of it's got your flashes that seems to be standard with a lot of the stuff. And it's got a light so that you could take and you could hang it up <coughs> to have light in the room. This is called the torch. So Bonnie mentioned on the chat that um, Goal Zero has been advertising a sale on their products right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yeah, and if you go to their store in Draper, they oftentimes will sell refurbished merchandise. Okay, so. good. Hi, Bonnie. It's nice. It's good stuff. Uh, I had a bigger battery that I was going to show, but even for like uh, our go bags, uh, we've got uh, a little light that they threw in when we bought a 72 hour thing. And this is uh, something that you can take. They gave a little cord with it 
and you can take and plug it into any USB, which with your, uh, your generating panels or your solar panels, you can get adapters and have those uh, heat up. Uh, there was one item that four patriots had, and it was a light. And it is a tactical light. And the tactical light takes and has two items. One of them around the front edge is a metal, and it, it is a taser. And on the, uh, uh, that's it. That's it. It's got a little taser here with the light. Uh, it will go off. The Don't one that pa is this not this isn't the Patriots. No, it's all light. No, so I, I can be a little bit careful. Uh, Patriots came with a, a key for the back of it, so kids can't play with it. But it throws out a shield of lasers that, if I were if I were ten feet away, would literally. Uh, cover the wall to the floor. So if somebody comes in, you don't have to directly point it at them. You can take and uh, hit their general area. And the pattern is so tight that uh, it'll catch their eyes. But as a light, uh, it's, it's kind of a nice little thing to have. And it's a source of protection. That is not a solar deal that has a USB charge to it. Back to you. Bruce, would you talk a little bit about your solar packets or options with that? the green ones? No, the the your tat like oh, that. This? Yeah, and okay. some different things. Uh, so we can come that. back to that. Uh, yeah, we Let's can do that. Do that in the question and answer. Yeah, this this actually has adapters where you can use the USB and my other battery pack uh, that I've got is not the big generator. Uh, it is a smaller one that's about the size of a Book of Mormon, and it has all the little gauges to tell you how full you, full you are and you are. And this is the cord that goes into that, and it will take and recharge that battery pack. This is actually designed for uh, your go bags and out uh, if you're out in the you know, have camping and hiking, and you want some way to charge your phone. That's a good way to do it. Okay, I'm going to tack a little bit on the lights. So, in my opinion, and a lot of emergency preparedness people, professionals' opinion, is that flashlights or lights are your number one item you should have. Mm -hmm. So, two lights I think you should always have. Most people have them. It's a flashlight on your phone, right? Most smartphones have a flashlight. And the number two, Keychain light. You should always have your keys in your pocket, right? So I love little keychain lights. Um, I recommend keeping a light by your bed. They say that, you know, if there's an earthquake or power outage, you can reach over and grab it. You've got light right by your bed as well as throughout your home. And it's easy to access locations. And in your car, don't forget about having a light in your car. Um, Rich talked about solar lights which i love a lot of my lights are solar you know that's the question which is better solar or battery in my opinion the answer is yes you know they're, they're they both have their good and bad points i like them both um like rich mentioned you're, you got to watch it if you leave batteries in your lights for you know extended periods of time all corrode in there i've got quite a few number of lights ruined that way expensive lights so um but if you do have Battery lights, it always keeps some extra batteries on hand. Uh, and check your lights often, you know, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't have a power outage and go to grab your light and go, oh crud, it's got dead batteries, or I didn't recharge it, you know. I check my lights every couple months, you know, I'll get them out and say, oh, I need to recharge that one, or that one looks kind of dim, throw new batteries in it, you know. Check them once in a while, that's what I recommend. Um, See, oh, one thing I really wanted to mention, these are awesome. This is a little light, it plugs in your outlets. And just when it's plugged in, you have power in your house, it has a little night light in it. It's kind of nice, but when the power goes out, it automatically kicks on. So you have a little light. This one also has a flashlight on the end, world's greatest flashlight, but it's okay. But 
Yeah, they'll just automatically turn on. And so I've got these throughout my house. If the power goes out, I can at least, it's enough light to at least see to walk out of the house or walk down the hallway. So those are awesome. I get like those, these I think I got on Amazon. They're really fairly economical. I think I paid yeah. 30 or 40 bucks for like six of them. So those are awesome. Um, battery leg, and just, you know, have a variety. I like having a variety of lights, you know, flashlights. I like lanterns just to sit on the table and it lights up the room. Again, different. You know, that's a battery operated one. This is a little uh, hybrid light one. It has a solar panel on top, like Rich was talking about. You know, like Rich talked about flashlights with solar panels on them. All sorts of different ones. Hey, Brad, uh -huh. I have my grandmother's uh, lamp that you put like tiki torch oil in it uh -huh. with the, do you, you know, and it gives out great light. Yeah, for so. outside. But no. It's an indoor. It's an indoor. Yeah. Pioneer light. I'll have to look at that one. Um, okay. Let me mention this really quick as I'm wrapping up. So how bright your light is, and this is typically for uh, the brighter the light, the less it runs, the less less time it runs. Typically, you know, like that tactical light I had. This super bright. You know, on a set of batteries, but runtime on it's only like an hour. You know, whereas if you got a light like this, I think this will run like eight hours on a charge. So, not nearly as bright, but longer runtime. So keep that in mind. How long your lights are going to run? You know, don't have don't have one light. Oh, okay, I've got this light that's super bright. It's like you get into a power outage, and you go, oh, it's an hour later, you're going crap. I don't have light. So. Have a few lights, you know. I always recommend that. My wife can testify. We have a few lights in our house. Um, also, you don't have a have larger lights in your house. You don't you don't want to be determined, you know, to search around your house or whatever you're doing with a little keychain light or something. You want to have the bigger, brighter lights you know, around your house. And, you know, I was going to mention too, you know, flashlights and aren't just for a big emergency. What if you need to get your keys in your, your car door or your house? What if you need to work, walk down a dark alley or what if your car breaks down somewhere? You know? So there's all sorts of reasons to have a flashlight, which you all know. I really, one last thing I wanted to mention is headlamps. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about that. I love headlamps because yeah, if you put it on your head, I'll even demonstrate it here so I look like a cyclops, but you know, you put it on your head and you've got your hands free to do stuff. So great. I love, love, love. So that's all we have for the demo. We'll open it up now for question and answers. Anybody have questions, comments, want to know more? Nobody? Julie. If you have a wood burning stove, you can buy in a fan that will sit on that and disperse the heat. My parents have that. Yeah, those ones that they're holding they're like. Up. Well, I forget what they're yeah. called, but they run off the heat of the stove. Yes. Yeah, I forget what they're called. You can now get those for, I've seen guys adapt those to these little buddy heaters too. But, and like, I want to say infrared, it's not infrared. Thermal, they call them, I think, a thermal fan. You know, they definitely yeah. run without batteries or anything. They just yeah. get the heat from them. So, yeah, it's a great thing. Dolly, did you have a I was just going to say, if you could turn that Lucy light on, I think you had a question about where to put it. And I have it on my window sticking outside. Oh, yeah. Behind the, the blinds. Yeah. Someone asked, where do you recharge them? And that's what I do. I just like this one. I'll stick in my window. Yeah. Every couple months, I'll stick it in my yep. bedroom window. Same thing with this one. I'll stick it in my bedroom window. Yep. You can put them outside. It probably charge a little faster outside. Not, you know, the solar sun's rays not going through a window, but I you know, just stick them in the window and leave them there for a couple of days. I'll charge it. That's fine. Any other questions? Comments anymore. Shout out to Bonnie yeah. joining us from North Carolina. Anything else? Questions? Any light questions? Yes, sir. Did I hear someone mention that Patriots has a retail store? Is that where you get a lot no, of No, Patriots are strictly online. Goal Zero does. Gold Patriots zero. is strictly online. Goal Zero. Goal Zero. Goal zero. It's Goal Zero. zero. Gold. It's, it's at the point stuff. of the mountain. Yeah, they're, they're mainly solar stuff. Great product. Very, very well. 
Bonnie said thank you for her shout out. <laughs> Make sure you call first. You're welcome, Bonnie. Yeah, their hours are off. So. Any other questions or comments or anything else you want to hear about? I know we kind of went through it fast tonight. I was scatterbrained and all over the place. So. Thank you. Do you know where you can order more of your little tiny propanes for that red heater thing? I can't find them anyway. Um, really? They have one Amazon. Amazon, yeah. Oh, it's all a shopping. The Amazon, Bosch. The Amazon the, that Bosch store. The, the, Bosch, yeah, the, the kitchen store. Yeah, the Bosch. Yeah, the Bosch. Yeah, the Bosch. Yeah, the Bosch. Uh, Any other questions, comments? Um, yeah. Okay, we're going to turn off the Zoom and then thank you, everybody. Good night, Nance.